my very dear friends, especially the young people who are here, took time off to be with us. And yes, half a century for any country is a great achievement. And then about 56 years ago, a many years, became independent. As I sat there looking at the line dance, I thought I was going to be in anti-climax after that wonderful show. And so I'm also going to cut it very short. Um, there was, I think, a period, I was just thinking, in the development of a country, is fear important, its domination, etc., or love? And I'll tell you what happened. Fear made some people want to ban the lion dance. Can you imagine the lion dance being banned from our country? And it was my late husband, neither Chinese nor Marina. And he learned how to negotiate, talk to people, uh, remove their fears, and got the lion dance back. And now you see, the lion dance is an expression of national culture. You find young Indian boys, you find young Malay boys, all of them enjoy the lion dance. So, is it fear or love? And we have had a very, very close association with Sabha and Sarawak. We had a very wonderful, very courageous, very loving first Prime Minister, the father of the nation. And one day he said, hey, some of them, we have all the infrastructure done. We worked very hard the first 10 years. But look at Sabha and Sarawak. It's all water, there are no phones. The children can't go to school. Don't you think we should share these good things with them? It's how a good idea usually starts like that and then builds it up into a country. I believe Tuku's sincerity was the genesis of these two joining up. But not under us, but as partners, equal partners, which we must remember. And there was a time, actually Tunku, I think many people may not be aware of this, he asked my late husband to be the liaison senior minister with Sabha and Sarawak, which meant several trips up and down. That time his portfolio was public works, telecoms and posts, and whatever other things needed to build up a good infrastructure for these two countries. Remember, they've got their own cultures, they've got their own festivals, there are lots of different types of people there and there's a very rich culture out there. Um, so what happened once when he went, I'll be very quick, there was a drought that we no rain and there was no food out there in the outlying village areas. And when I called him, he said, there is no president, no planet, how much food we bring, how we bring to feed these people. And there's no rain. And so he sat there with a few officers, worked out how much rice, how much sugar, etc. Et and he sent them from KL. This actually happened. I didn't see him for two, or two weeks or more. And those of you who have seen my husband, he's still dark. And whenever anybody is looking for him, I said, look for a tall dark man and he'll be there. <laughs> so, when he came back, it, it had been so hot and no rain, his skin was all rough, he had become darker. That's how bad the drought was. And he made it possible to feed all the kampong areas and find food for them. And he said this had never been done before. So that's what happened when freedom comes and we all work together with very simple, with affection and I want what I want for the other person, regardless of whether they are katasans or nuisance or whatever. When I was in Asinta recently, taking treatment, so from that period I come down to early this year, questions about herself, and two things stand out. One was, I said, where do you come from in Sabha? She said, do soon. Okay. So I said, how do you say good morning in your language? 
she told me something about Nigel's Namat Padi, Good Morning or whatever, something I've never heard. And I'm 50 years of Malaysia. I haven't heard the language. I felt bad, you know. Then I said, I have to repeat this after you so that when I, when I leave the hospital, I at least remember good morning in Busun. Okay? And then I, I looked at her. She's about one third my age now, uh, but younger. So I said, my dear, I don't even know good morning in your language, but I want your vote. <laughs> Will you follow? Because just before our last election, we were dying to get East Malaysia votes. But we didn't know how to say good morning in their language. So that's how we have developed our relationship with them. We just want something from them, but we need it for ourselves. But we don't think of their culture, we don't think of them as people. And then as I talked to her, she said her father was a retired government servant and they were Christian. Sorry. Yeah. But there were relations in the Rajis, the Muslim religion. She wants it. And she said it had never been a problem to them. They were very happy, very integrated, and it had never eroded on their love for each other. And I thought that was a great thing. And that's what I'd like to share with you today. And I brought a little poem. After all, when Tumpu wanted to share all our good things with them, he wanted all of us to be happy together. He had this simple formula. He used to say, like, happy children playing in the sun. And so I found this poem to share with all of you. Happiness comes of the capacity to feel deeply, to enjoy simply, to think freely, to risk life, to be needed. So on this uh, half a century celebration which our friends have been so beautifully and to all of you, let us all feel needed, let us remember this word love and let us never be, have to be afraid of each other. God bless. Thank you.